to start the installation we're going to take off these uh this air cover here um which is the cold air duct this actually scoops in cold air you can see there's lines that actually nicely sculpt that towards the air boxes here which allows this engine to get nice uh cold air on the dyno this cold air ducting did not show any signs of restriction either in the MAF reading or in the MAF reading in the manifold so um didn't see any restrictions there so it's gonna stay there for performance reasons and not only that um, out here in arizona we need all the cold air we can get so now that we've lifted up the car we'll go ahead and start we're gonna take this off and then we're gonna look at the radiator all right so now with the um, cover off we can actually see down into the radiator area here really nicely this is where the oil cooler is going to be down at the bottom there's a nice little flat tray for it to sit um, there's no mounting hardware that uh, comes with the kit it's a universal kit and there's no kit that exists for the m56 yet um, but uh, we're going to try and make it work today uh, you can see the oil filter is pretty easy to get to i already have the engine covers removed from the bottom um, so it makes it a little bit easier to see but that's the oil cooler right there and uh, that's where the oil filter sandwich plate is going to be so we can run our uh, pressure lines to the cooler now that oil, oil filter may or may not work with the filter uh, sandwich plate because the, the plate is about uh, half an inch to an inch thick so we might have to source another uh, oil filter for that all right now so after taking a first look at this looks like i'm going to take the grill off just to make it a little bit easier to reach my hands in there so um on the back side of this you can probably see maybe see if we can get a good angle at this um there are some screws on the back side of this um some 10 millimeters right here i think that's um what we need to remove and i think if we go around around here there's clips probably another screw there there we go and then some more clips and another screw down there and i think that uh the grill will come right out <clears throat> as it turns out there's a couple more bolts that i have to get so it's kind of hard to see in there but um, there's a phillips head right there there's a couple more clips along the bottom row here um, that we need to get to one right there i think uh, i think there's a couple more on that side um, that we need to get to so taking a little bit longer than expected as you can see here there's actually two bolts or two screws um, on this side on the bottom they're pretty difficult to get to um, I used a couple of sockets to raise up the bumper just a little bit make it a little bit easier to access those um, I'm probably guessing I'm not gonna screw those back in just because it looks like it's kind of a pain in the neck uh, we'll see how that works out all right okay so here we can see that I've got this kind of in place um, you can see that I have much more room to go in and kind of fiddle around with uh, without the grill on it makes it a little bit easier to work on and if we come down here underneath the car we can actually see the cooler sitting right there and there's a nice little shelf that uh, infinity provides there that we can probably get some self tappers in and into the bottom and then you can see up there at the top here for this bracket we'll probably make some sort of l bracket or or something to to bolt to this um, upright support um, to make this um, mounting more stable Before we do that let's just take a look at the oil cooler or i'm sorry the oil filter and looking at the oil filter i think there's going to be plenty of room to add that oil sandwich plate and um it'll go right there between the filter and the stock oil cooler which is also an oil heater so for our application we just want to make sure we leave about a fingers width gap here um, both at the top and the bottom of the of the heat exchangers just so we can allow that radiant heat to do its thing and allow the convection heat to actually uh, perform um, its job as well so um, so you'll see this stepped out just a little bit from the ac condenser that's what we see here then the radiator is actually behind here you can see that 
little air gap. So we just want to try and match that. Um, engineers is our, have already figured that out, so we don't have to um, do anything special. We just have to kind of match what the factory's already done. That, that way we'll know we're, we're good to go. All right. All right, as you can see, we got the holes drilled out. And I'm going to mount the bottom part of the uh, cooler. All right, now we got that bolted down um, at the base. We got our bolts in. You can see it's still just a little bit too wobbly up here for my liking. So somehow we're going to tie into this. I'm not exactly sure yet because we'd have to drill and uh, maybe get a self-tapper in there. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'm going to take a look at my garage and see what kind of... Um, See what kind of stuff we have to play with and see what I got laying around. But you can see I got a nice a nice air gap here. Um, it is stepped away from the uh, condenser enough so that we can get that um, ambient airflow and we should be good to go. All right, so coming back to mounting the, the top bracket here, swing around here, get a better angle there. So what you can see here is I took some of this uh, silicone hose here. You can see it's just whatever quarter inch hose and I split it down the middle and cut it to size and that way it'll give me a little bit of um, cushioning between this bracket and the oil cooler that'll just prevent rattles down um, down the road I'm sure all right so for interest of time I was gonna make a bracket that came off of this uh, tab here mounting tab here let me bring it in closer uh, this tab here and then come up against uh, the bumper support here crash bar whatever you want to call it um, I don't have the right angle drill to get to that right now so uh, for interim um, I have these heavy-duty zip ties that uh, that are really good they're really strong for street use um, even probably for some light racing those those are probably uh, hold up um, I don't know if they pass tech in certain racing uh, leagues but uh, for what we're doing I mean this thing is now it's sturdy and those things are going nowhere so that's what we got to work with all right, now anything that or anytime you're adding an oil cooler, what you want to do is make sure that your port, uh, ports are facing up uh, away from gravity. That way, when your engine is off, it is not draining down back into the uh, oil pan. I can do a couple different things. It can give you false readings in your dipstick when your engine is off, thinking that you're over, overfilled, and, um, and that'll lead to oil starvation, which is bad. Um, but not only that, is you want to have that constant pressure um in the line or i should say constant oil in the line that way you have no moments after startup where there's any oil starvation so you want to make sure you fill this up with oil um, i'm lucky i have this funnel that already has a an aluminum attachment on it that actually fits perfectly in the actual fitting here um, so i'm just gonna go ahead and fill this up i'm gonna take off this other um other tab here and or other cap just so that i can see when it's filled so i'm full so um, we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, so what you want to do now is get your oil filter sandwich adapter here. Um, take that out. Um, I got my fittings over here. Yeah, I know my garage is a mess, but uh, we're going to clean it up here in, the, in another video here shortly. These fittings all take O-rings. Um, the O-rings fit on the back side that actually screw into the oil filter adapter. Um, the oil filter adapter comes with um two of these actual oil filter thread adapters and these actually go um in the filter sandwich like that and this is actually what screws up against the engine what's already there where the stock um, oil filter already screws into um it comes with two adapters i'm not sure if you can see that it comes with three quarter by 16 inch threads uh, which is not the one we want we want this one which you can see here threads in nice and smooth which is, I believe, an M20 by um, 1.5. So, um, whoops, there we go. Um, 
There we go. If we can see that there, focus. Focus. Not gonna focus, okay. M20 by 1.5, kind of, okay. Anyway, so we just wanna double check that that's what our threads are. Um, and technically speaking, um, you also want to verify that your oil filter, um, the actual oil filter will uh, made up to the surface here, which I'm confident it will. Um, we'll just double check without turning the oil filter uh, upside down. Uh, what we'll do here is we'll just do this. Screw that on pretty darn close to the bottom out. Flip this upside down, center that on there. And then as you can see here, the oil filter mates right up there. So we're looking good, um, no issues. This comes with an O-ring seal on the back side. So your O-ring seal right here will uh, seal against the engine and then your oil filter seals on that side. So that's how those work. All right, here we go, finished product. Uh, we can see no leaks here, no leaks there, which is really good. Come up over here, throw over the engine bay. Let's see if we can see it down in there. It's down in there, so you get a good view. See from the top. Now we come down here to the bottom, to where we can really see it. Um, you can see the the uh, stock filter uh, fits. Oh, it's a little bright. Um, we can see there's no leaks at the fittings, no leaks at the uh, housing, no leaks at the filter. So everything looks really good. Just gonna let it idle for a little bit and uh, and just make sure nothing leaks uh, over time and let it warm up. And then we'll take it for a test drive. See, um, see if it really does help the temps out.